Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. I'm going to go through the depth in chemistry paper question 6, but the main reason I want to go through this is because of rates of reaction. I don't really want to go through the equilibrium stuff of this video because I think we've got enough on that already. One thing to begin with though, because obviously question 6 does actually start with um, a application of equilibria to the sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide gas equilibrium that we can see just here. Um, there is enough explanation already on the channel and in your notes for this. This is in the red pass paper pack, remember this whole thing? And you can see at the bottom just here, I've made a note, this actual exam question about equilibria, this is very, very similar, if not almost identical, to the breadth in chemistry question near the end of the paper about this very equilibria and the compromise conditions. So it is worth taking careful note of the most recent practice paper that they've given out. Now, off the back of that then, the rest of this question actually goes into a lot of work on rates. So not only does it have a concentration time graph, but it also has the Maxwell-Boltzmann uh, distribution. The Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution for the OCRA specification is only referred to as the Boltzmann distribution curve. But obviously, if you're doing AQA, then you'll recognize it as the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. It really makes no difference whatsoever. You don't need to worry about it. It's just a descriptor of the graph itself. So to begin with, a concentration time graph. So for the concentration time graph, we can see here what I've done early on is I've taken the data that they've given me and I've actually already plotted the points because I didn't think that would make for a very good video really, just me deciding on a scale. But you can see I've effectively just taken the top end values here, I've gone to 400 and I've gone to uh, 0.05 and I've just translated that into a scale. The most important thing here is where does time go and consistently time should go on the x-axis and concentration should go on the y-axis and you have to be really careful with that if you do them the wrong way around you can end up with a very weird looking graph and it won't really help you answer the rest of the question top rule is time goes on the x-axis so you can see here i've got my graph all my points are nicely plotted just there and i've already done it in pencil but i'll just go over it in the pen now but it has actually asked me to draw a line of best fit now for chemistry i know it's different for every science every time you walk into one classroom and walk out of the next you will find that you get a different set of rules but for chemistry a line of best fit can be a curve and it's obviously meant to be a curve for this one now, your marks for this are really clear in the guidelines for this paper, although we do think the tangent we'll do next is a little bit off in their mark scheme, but we'll go through a version that um, is accepted in theirs. Now, for this then, you can see that you must have the axes labelled here, so I've got concentration um, in moles per decimeter cubed of SO3, and you can see that I've got time in seconds just at the bottom there, just going to shut up. So that's your first mark, actually, for getting the time on the x-axis. And for also making sure that you've used a good scale. Now, your next mark, so the second mark for this, was for all the points being plotted. So actually, doing the plot of points correct gets you your second mark. They occasionally allow one point to be one square away, and then they'll still give you the mark for that. But really, the graph paper is really clear for this one. You shouldn't be making any mistakes. And the final mark is for the curve of best fit. Now, for the next section, which is on the next page of this, it has actually asked us for, use the graph to determine the initial rate of this reaction. Show your working below and on the graph. I'm going to actually do all the working out on the graph just to stop me having to flick back and forth for this one. But since we've been asked for the initial rate, what we need to do is do the tangent to this curve at t equals zero. So we're going through the origin just here, and we're drawing a tangent against our curve like that. OK, so I'm going to go through the origin. Unfortunately, I'm left handed for this, so I'm going to have to just put it over the line like that, which is a bit tricky for anyone else who is left handed. And I'm going to draw my tangent on. I'll do it in red so you can see it nice and clearly, like so. Now, for my tangent there, this works out really, really well, because in order to measure the gradient of the tangent, what I need to do is the change in y divided by the change in x. So it's going to effectively be the change in y divided by the change in x, and that's going to give me my gradient. So here, because I can actually consider it, can you see how it goes to this first point just sort of up here? If we look at our data table, we can see that is roughly actually the first point measurement here. So what I can actually do is effectively just take the 0.024 from that first measurement, and I can also take the 50. So I'm literally just lifting data from this first point now 
because it was so close to this starting bit here. It makes it much easier. You can do the whole drawing out of the triangle, which of course, you can do on either side. It's entirely up to you, it really doesn't matter. So if I was to take this one for instance, and then have my dotted line there. I'd have my change up to here of 0.024. I'd have my change down to there of 50. And I'd be able to put this together using that. But I can see it quite clearly here because I've gone all the way up from zero. It's just going to be the values of these points. So I don't actually need to work out a difference between two numbers at all. I don't have to use a smaller triangle somewhere else on here. This is just an easier way to do it. So for the next one then, I need to put that number down. So for this mark, it is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 4. If you've got a copy of this paper, and for those people at our college, this is in your Red Pass paper pack, the actual value they'll accept around here, they want you to have a tangent that's much steeper here, and we genuinely think that that is a mistake on OCR's part. We think they've rushed this through a bit. Um, but they do accept this number, which is these two, and it works out perfectly to the uh, line that we would have drawn here. So it all works out in the end. It's just being mindful that don't be too harsh on yourself when you're looking at the boundary for this paper. So that's your working out, which you would put on the next page as well. And obviously this is the working out that you would show on the graph, just the idea of drawing the tangent on here and showing your lines going out. And it's really good if you just have it going down to zero here with the triangle that you would draw on. And hopefully you remember that from maths GCSE. Okay, so our next bit of this is we've been asked to draw this experiment is repeated in the presence of a catalyst. Draw and label a line on the graph to show the results of the catalyzed experiments over the same time period. So, I'm going to draw this one in green. Now, when we add a catalyst, we increase the rate of reaction, but we don't actually change the number of moles or the concentration of anything that's made um, at the end. So what we need to make sure is that our gradient is steeper, but that we end at the same point. So I'm going to do my very best with this one as a first time swoop. There we go. So you can see that I've got the gradient of the line is steeper, and that would be part of the mark, and then it ends at the same point over here, which is the second part of the mark. Nice and simple. Now the next bit, next question to be looking at, is taking it away from the concentration time graph and looking more at the context of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve, or remember for OCRA, which is this college, the Boltzmann distribution curve. So, first bit for this, explain with a reason whether V205 is a homogeneous or heterogeneous catalyst. Now you can see in the description, a solid catalyst of vanadium 5 oxide is used in industry, and we can see gas, gas, gas. So it is different, which means it is a heterogeneous catalyst, and you would obviously write that here. And the reason that this is a heterogeneous catalyst, this vanadium 5 oxide, or vanadium pentoxide, you can often call this, is because the catalyst is in a different state. That's important. You can say phase, but states obviously are a bit more familiar to us in terms of language. So the catalyst is in a different state from the reactants. Next bit. Now this is something that's been added into the specification. It used to be in the resources booklet, um, which was on the old spec, but now they've added it in as this little final line inside rates as a topic. So we do expect this to come up. Um, the question is, the use of catalysts in industrial processes can be beneficial to the environment. State one reason of this. And effectively, you can sum this up by saying lower energy demand and although that does cover you, gets you all the marks, if we just want to expand on that, we can say from burning fossil fuels. So that just gives you a little bit of context. Next one is our Boltzmann distribution. So you can see for OCRA, it is just Boltzmann. Don't worry about it though, remember. So for this one, what we've got is to label our axis and to actually draw the Boltzmann distribution curve on here. And then we also need to explain why adding a catalyst increases the rate of reaction in the lines just underneath. So labeling up our axis, we've got number of molecules. And we've also got down here energy. Now the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve looks exactly the same as the Boltzmann distribution curve, and it goes like that. 
Nice and easy. Nice gradual curve up, never touching the x-axis on this side. Job done. You can label on the activation energy for this, but you don't really need to. But if we were going to, we would put it there. And that's going to help me explain my next bit. So for the next bit, what we need to do, explain why adding a catalyst increases the rate of reaction. Don't just say a catalyst increases rate of reaction. We already know that. What we need to say is a catalyst provides an alternative route for reaction with a lower activation energy. So we can actually draw that onto the graph. There's no marks for this bit, but if you do want to draw it onto the graph, what would happen is the catalyst would actually change the activation energy to being about here, and we can call it E cat, for instance. And then, originally, these molecules were able to react upon collision because they had energy greater than or equal to deactivation energy, whereas now what we've got with the catalyst, we've got these and those from before. Don't forget, and those from before. That's the important bit. So what we need to do now is just put this into words at the bottom for our final mark here. We need to then say that more molecules have, and we can just do energy greater than or equal to the activation energy. That covers us just there. I hope that uh, sums up this question quite nicely for you and gives you a nice run over rate, making sure that you know how to draw the tangent to a curve for a concentration time graph. Don't forget that temperature goes on the x-axis and don't be too harsh on yourself if you actually have a copy of this paper. You can see here we've got to an answer that they accepted, the 4.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Make sure you show all your workings. So we've got the change in y divided by the change in x. You draw your tangent on nice and clearly. Take a pencil with you into the exam for this kind of question um, and a ruler, a good quality big ruler. Um, because you need to make sure that you're not getting stressed out and if you draw it faintly in pencil and then go over it in black pen or you can leave it in pencil for this ordinarily, then um, you don't get worried about every time you try and rub something out if you're left with any black marks. I'll leave you to the rest of the playlists. Um, happy revising.